Yeah, this is actually my debut pretty much. Uh, I've actually not been doing huge speaking events until now, but I'm very glad Bernard gave me the opportunity to come to you guys and just talk a little bit uh, about what I do, but more giving you advice as well on running your organization. So I'd like to just kind of gauge everybody here uh, by asking how many people are actually business owners? Okay, now how many people are wanting to be future entrepreneurs or business owners perhaps? Perfect. So as, as he said, I am David Cottrell, Federal Party Director of the Citizen Party. Uh, I may possibly be your future Prime Minister one day. Yeah. Uh, so just before I get into that, though, I'll just give you a brief overview, uh, overview of my background. I was born in Mexico, hence I keep the mustache, so everyone is very clear on where I came from. Uh, I was actually adopted by my Canadian parents. So I don't speak Mexican, unfortunately. Or sorry, not Mexican, right. Spanish. <laughs> oh my God! Stop recording. Um, that, that's. I mean, my my parents are uh, Ukrainian, German, French, and Irish and British. So as you can tell, not very cultured on that end uh, for myself. But um, so when I was younger, I. I used to actually have a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit myself. I actually sold candy in the uh, schoolyards. It's good money, you know, 20 bucks every day starts adding up very quickly. Uh, after that, I decided that I wanted to kind of go and expand into a different field. So I started running an e-commerce business, primarily focused on eBay. Uh, that was uh, getting people goods that they wanted in. So if they wanted brand name shirts, shoes, whatever it may be, that's what I started doing. And that was just in high school. Uh, and also, during that time, I actually obtained a YouTube partnership that's been generating money, I think, still. Uh, I was reviewing products with a company that I partnered with. Um, they would just send me some stuff on discount and I would review it. It was mainly like outdoor uh, sort of materials and things like that. So for like the hunters, camp and things like that. Uh, when I finished high school, I moved to Winnipeg, Manitoba to just kind of start things fresh. I just, I needed to just clean the slate. Uh, I applied for a job with the federal government. That was my first job. I got rejected from McDonald's, uh, Burger King, restaurant. I, I wasn't good enough for the dish pit, apparently. <laughs> uh, but somehow I got an interview with the government. That was the first, my first ever interview, too. Um, that was very nerve-wracking uh, for somebody coming right out of high school. But somehow I landed it. And from that point on, while I was working in the government, I knew that I wanted to continue working in the federal arena. Uh, it gives a new uh, perspective to how things are done, kind of besides the private sector. The government functions in a very different way, that's for sure. Uh, leaping ahead, though, I then decided that I wanted to try the most expensive experiences in the world, post-secondary education. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school to study international business, actually at Seneca College. Um, I'm not the best student ever. I have a tendency to want to sleep a little bit more than go to class. Um, you know, I have a wandering mind sometimes, so it, it does, uh, it is some of those things, I'm sure some of you can relate that you can't sit in the classroom. Or even maybe right now, some of you might be antsy, and you're like, I, I just want to go. I have that sort of, uh, I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage, it is an advantage. It's more of a creative mind. You want to be out there, you want to be free. Some people want structure, they want something that's completely set. Both are fine, but uh, it is finding what you like best. So anyways, I was supposed to be studying for an exam, but I just found that too boring. So I did what any other reasonable person would do, and I drafted the framework for a political organization that would compete in the next federal election. <laughs> so what do I do now? Well, my job as a federal party director is to continuously expand the influence and reach of the party through policy, marketing, and media initiatives. Uh, it's really kind of being the minister of everything at this point. You have to just kind of oversight, have oversight on everything that goes on. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot. It's, as many of you people probably know, when you run a business, you're really the boss of everything. You're not just specified in one sector or one piece. You have your mind on everything, even if you're not particularly too good at it. Um, but that's, that's what it takes when you start out and you're all alone, perhaps, or maybe you have a smaller team, you all have to kind of pitch in and do what you need to do. And starting a party requires cash and lots of it, 
So currently I actually work two other jobs. I actually just came back from one. Uh, I work for a storage company and uh, I take part-time work at a retail store working in the back doing stock. So, um, you know, you have to do what you want. Or you, sorry, you have to work very, very hard to really achieve those dreams, especially when it comes to starting your own uh, businesses, your organizations, because you do require that cash, that capital. As much as you might not want to work for it, you still got it. Uh, so that's on top of my job as being the director of the Citizen Party, and also taking on two jobs helps me pay off that pesky post-secondary cost there. Um, so why did I get into politics? Well, in the private sector there's money, but there's not a whole lot of purpose. In the government I found that there was purpose, but not a whole lot of opportunity to imagine things outside of the box. Everything is very regimental and structured and bureaucratic. Politics, though, gives a chance that no other job or any other kind of experience that I've uh, had uh, it gives you unlimited opportunity. I get to go to networking events with different people all the time. I get to meet people from different sectors, different jobs, different backgrounds, different countries, whatever it may be. I don't know any other job that would allow me to actually do that and meet and greet so many people. And I know some people in the audience may recognize me, some people don't. I know one over there for sure, and Bernard, of course, because I met him before. It also gives you a vast amount of experience and the ability to change not only the nation, but the world as a whole. When I started this, I learned that any new organization requires leadership, it requires dedication, and most importantly, it requires vision. You need to see into the future if you want others to follow you. If you're wandering around, people will be confused, you'll be confused, and you'll start seeing faltering support. It's not an easy process, as, it, as especially in politics, as there's really no true rule book or guideline. Even with your businesses, you can read some help, uh, helpful books perhaps, but they're never ever going to tell you exactly how to do it. Everybody's business, everybody's organization is completely different, and you have to really make your own path. There's, it's pretty much going down a worn down trail with unreadable signs. Sometimes you take a loop and other times it's just smooth travel. However, after laying the foundation of the Citizen Party, we've been able to uh, start erecting pillars to build upon. And the skills that I've learned in politics are amazingly transferable to business. I just want to give you some pieces of advice and experience that uh, I've personally learned that may help you as either present or future entrepreneurs, innovators, or inventors. The first one, and I know the last speaker spoke up on, on this, but uh, I'd have to say my only regrets are the opportunities I didn't take. I'll let that sink in for a second. My only regrets are the opportunities I didn't take. Take every opportunity you have. It might not end very well, but at least you know the result. There's nothing worse than saying, I don't know what would have happened if. And I know it's difficult to get started, and it's even harder to maintain a functional business or organization. However, if it was easy, you probably wouldn't get the same satisfaction of success once you achieve those goals. I have one law that I follow and that's failure is not an option. An objective will always be completed no matter what, even if it was not the intended result. Apply this to your life and your business and your attitude and I can guarantee you, you'll see things differently. Even if things are falling apart, set an objective to say, this is the limit of how far below I'll go. Ensure that it doesn't go down there. You can always change your objective. Never ever set an objective in stone. Adapt with the times. Another key aspect of running a successful organization is having a good, loyal employee base. I believe we're limited only by ourselves, so you need to seek others to unlock new abilities. If you hate doing something, hire someone who loves it. If you can't do something, find somebody who can. And if you don't know something, ask somebody who does. And I'm fairly cynical, but it taught me something, and that's to use I guess negativity to your advantage. I believe if you want to improve or innovate something, especially for those of you looking for perhaps a new business idea or a new business model, you have to look at the negative aspects of something. Find out what is wrong, what doesn't work, what, make, what makes people dislike something. 
Don't just accept it for what it is. Find a better, simpler, and easier way of doing it. The most profitable ideas are those that expand on things that already exist, not on which that don't. Also, I just kind of wrote this a little bit ad lib here, just from the last speaker, and that is, uh, you do have to prepare for sacrifice. There is a lot when you're starting your business or organization where you, a lot of people go in thinking, I'm gonna set my own hours, and that's true. But if you wanna be successful, you're on call 24 seven. There is no break whatsoever. Yes, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I have three hours sleep to me right now. I had to go to work, trying to stay up and awake. I haven't went to bed yet. I had like a pizza that just went in the oven very quickly, so it's not exactly the glamorous lifestyle right now. I'm not jet sitting around and going to Bahamas and Jamaica <laughs> yet. <laughs> However, that is something that you will have to be prepared for, and a lot of people are not. They, as soon as they see that they're gonna have to give things up, they're gonna have to buy cheap food, they kind of want to abandon off of that. And I guess the next point would be to never surrender, never give up. There's gonna be these times where things might seem like they're not going according to plan. It's even with the one event where they only had 15 people. These things happen and you can't control it no matter what you do. Make sure though that you don't give up because just because it happens once doesn't mean the next time that it's gonna be as bad. You might actually be able, it might just have been a bad day, it might have been snowing, it might have been raining, Maybe people all have the flu. You don't know. Keep persevering. Keep going through. That gives you an advantage that any other competition that you have may not be able to keep up with. If you can persevere through the hardest times, you're already going to be the top one. And really, that's kind of all I have to say. Um, I guess I could just say also the side note, if you're looking to make a positive difference, we are looking to take on uh, different high caliber people to get involved with the party. Um, not that I'm saying this was any part uh, due to me, but one girl who works for us now actually works for a big auto corporation. I don't know if that was, I'm gonna take the credit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I guess I just feel any questions or anything that you guys would have then. Oh. Yeah, what would you say is uh, the best advice that someone has ever given to you? The best advice, that's a good one. I would say it's to just, it, it, it kind of runs with the opportunity thing. Um, to just take every opportunity that you have, uh, you know, even if it might not seem like it's a good idea, it's better to at least have tried that, that route. So you have to make your own path. I mean, if you want to run a different business and you want to have your organization more successful than perhaps another, if you follow their trail, you're just going to end up the same place that they're at. And that doesn't really help you. But if you make your own, you're going to see different things. You're going to have a new perspective. Um, they might not have had a disaster happen that you've had, but you know how to deal with it now. That's your advantage because you have that experience. You're able to apply that to whatever it is that you're trying to do. And so I would say, yeah, that would be the best advice that I would have is just seize every opportunity, really. Carpe diem. So uh, what's one mistake that you wish that you have avoided? One mistake. Hmm. The one mistake uh, that I probably would have wished that I avoided, most likely would have just been not gaining experience and instead, I mean, I don't want to knock school or anything, but during that time I really felt like I should have been gaining more on the ground experience. I don't personally like reading books and textbooks, it's great if you want to be a lawyer. Education is great if you want to do something that people already know. But it's very, very difficult if you're trying to do something completely different and something that no one's ever done because there's no book on it. There's no real education on that particular subject. So uh, that's what I would definitely say is uh, not that I'm suggesting you all drop out or anything like that, especially with the cost. So. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we'll go through the question. After. Oh, okay, no problem. Of the after. David, you're cheating, man. Oh, no problem. I didn't know. He's <laughs> cheating. Give up for David, man.
good, you know. They, oh, they yeah. don't see it, man. Yeah. They oh, don't yeah. see the hard work, the sacrifice, you know.